This is Robert Kalua with the news on Zodiac. The headlines. Governance experts slam government on its indecisiveness on independence celebrations. Parliament refers to its Legal Affairs Committee, the Labor Relations Amendment Bill, which seeks to grant employees, employers rather, right to tax salaries for workers that are on strike. President Chagwila calls on African leaders to emulate the spirit of Zambian First President Kenya Kaunda. MLS describes government decision to appoint two high court judges to diplomatic missions as interference in the judiciary. Let's now have a look at the news in detail. Governors experts have slammed government on its indecisiveness in decision making citing the recent U10 on July 6 independence celebration. The experts Professor Habe Kayuni from University of Malawi and Wonderful Mkuche are baffled at government's decision to blow 244 million towards a day-long event in the middle of a critical need to buy COVID-19 vaccines. Chairperson of the July 6 celebrations, Richard Chimwendo Banda, earlier said the celebrations would be held in all regions, but later said this had been revised. Andrew Viano filed this report. On Thursday, five cabinet ministers led by Minister of Homeland Security Richard Jimundubanda told journalists in Lilongi that the country will hold six July independence celebrations in all regions of the country and that about 244 million kwacha was to be spent for the occasion. But barely hours after the announcement, Jimundubanda said government has made a U10 to scale down on the costs for the event following advice from Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. The chairperson of the anniversary celebration said the budget has been trimmed to 50 million kwacha. The U10, however, has not amused governance experts who have slammed government for being indecisive. Professor Habeka Uni from University of Malawi says the decision to have the celebrations is ill-timed. Quite surprising that we, uh, some individuals uh, actually even thought about holding this function when we should actually be restricting the numbers, etc. So it's as if we are sending a wrong message to the public. Actually, at the same time, we are using the same resources, diverting them to uh, for ce celebration. Those resources could have been used uh, for something else, like uh, we don't have the vaccine now. What message are we sending to all those stakeholders? Concurring with Kayuni, Another expert, Wanda Funkuche, says it is high time government started making consultations before announcing decisions on national matters. The change, uh, of course, has been due to uh, public pressure. But then as government, uh, they should be able to learn uh, to make uh, decisions uh, which they think uh, uh, they are right or fit. And they are not just acting uh, uh, because of public pressure. Uh, what we can note uh, from this government, uh, they tend us to act on public pressure that uh, they are oriented uh, towards being uh, politically uh, right. And uh, that is not good uh, in terms of uh, political uh, leadership. On July 6th this year, Malawi will be celebrating 57 years of independence from colonial rule. Parliament has referred to its Legal Affairs Committee on the Labor Relations Amendment Bill, which seeks to grant employers the right to deduct salaries for workers that are on strike, among other proposed changes. Deputy Minister of Labor Vera Kamtukure told the House when presenting the bill Friday that the amendment will be in line with the International Labor Organization's guidelines, which stipulate that deducting salary does not violate the right to strike. This report by Winston Kaimira. Deputy Minister of Labor Vera Kamtukure says the right to strike cannot be violated through deduction of wages of those involved in the industry action according to the International Labor Organization ILO guidelines. She said when presenting the Labor Relations Amendment Bill that the bill is therefore seeking to grant employers the right to deduct salaries of workers who are on strike. We are not denying a fundamental right of a person not to go on strike. So people are free to go on strike. What the law is saying is that should you go on strike, then you will not be paid for the time that you are on strike. That's number one. Number two, when an employee has been employed, they are employed to provide a particular service. And if they take away their service, then why should they be paid? Kantukule also said the bill proposes to empower her ministry to come up with a list of essential service providers who cannot be involved in a strike or lockdowns. She said another proposed amendment is on the system of using employer and employee panelists in hearing of labor cases in the Industrial Relations Court, 
which according to the Deputy Minister, contributes to delayed justice delivery. And when presenting the Employment Act Amendment Bill, the Deputy Minister proposed that the tenancy system of farming be removed from the country's laws, saying it is contributing to child labor. The bill also seeks to introduce paternity leave in the country's labor system. This is Winston Kaimira reporting for Zodiac. President Lazarus Chakwila has called on African leaders to emulate the spirit of Zambia's first president, Kenneth Kaunda of Pan-African. He spoke during the funeral ceremony of Dr. Kaunda, who died last month after suffering from pneumonia. The Malawian president said unless there is unity, Africa cannot develop. Here's part of what the president said during the memorial service. The interment of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda will not merely be the burial of a lifeless body, but the planting of a vibrant seed. The burial of Dr. Kenneth Kaunda will be the planting of Africa's finest seed into Africa's finest soil. From our planting of this seed, let us harvest a new Pan-African generation with the passion for the ideals Dr. Kaunda embodied. From our planting of this seed, let us harvest a new Pan-African generation with a vision for African governments free of corruption and oppression. From our planting of this seed, let us harvest a new Pan-African generation with the vision for borders that feel open, not closed. From our planting of this seed, let us harvest a new Pan-African generation with the energy to trade goods between Africans and Africans. From our planting of this seed, let us harvest a new Pan-African generation with the resolve to build roads and rail, connecting Cairo to Cape Town and Dakar to Djibouti. The harvest of a new Pan-African generation is Dr. Kaunda's lasting legacy. A new Pan-African generation is what Dr. Kaunda sought to build. Now that he has left us, we must embody the ideals of this giant. We must become a fortress that protects Africa from those who seek to exploit and divide her from within and from without. We must walk together with one heart as he taught us. The end of Amorzi, Building one Africa as he showed us and seeing one vision as he did. The Malawi Irish Consortium on Gender-Based Violence in Malawi has called for a transformation of the country's food systems by ending inequalities experienced by women and girls in course of food production. Chairperson of the consortium, Janet Waynard, says that gender equality is at the heart of most of Malawians' food systems. The consortium has eight organizations, among them Action Aid, Concern Worldwide, Irish Aid, Trocare, to just mention a few. Innocent Kumchedo reports. The eight organizations in the Malawi Irish Consortium on Gender Based Violence are agreeing on one important aspect that Malawi's food system has since time immemorial been characterized by gender imbalances. In fact, in the language of the chair of this consortium, Jeanette Wynott, gender inequality is at the heart of most of the country's food systems. But that's not the only problem. All this means that Malawi has a broken food system that caused food insecurity and put women at the mess of men, resulting into them becoming victims of gender-based violence. Often food insecurity can worsen domestic violence, issues of gender-based violence. So we, our vision would really be that we would love women and men farmers to have access to markets, to have better products to not only feed themselves but also generate an income. Dr. Judith Kamoto, a gender expert in agriculture and natural resources from the Lilongo University of Agriculture in Natural Resources, Bunda College, says it is now time to start examining the activities that happen in the food production system and change some of the norms. We need to change and that change needs to start from the institutions which are policies and those changes should be targeted to the household, how individuals in the household work 
and uh, in the community because a household is within a village. The consortium will come up with recommendations which will be in line with government's development blueprint. Malawi 2063. Oxfam has donated COVID-19 personal protective equipment and rehabilitated water and electricity systems at Chuamba Health Center in Nilongwe with 50 million kwacha in its drive to improve health facilities and prevention of COVID-19. During the handover ceremony on Friday, Oxfam Country Director Lingalina Numihowa said this has been done to address some of the challenges the facility has been facing. The facility saves over 60,000 people, and this, according to Council Chair for the District, Luciano Botoman, is a huge bailout. Alina Femlamba found this report. Speaking during a handover ceremony of COVID-19 personal protective equipment and rehabilitated water and electricity systems at Shiwamba Health Center in Nilong on Friday, Oxfam Country Director Lingalireni Mihoa said improved hygiene and sanitation can play an important role in putting to check further spread of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. There was a gap in terms of uh, ability to support the health system to encourage people to do the prevention methods that government was recommending, which includes availability of water for people to hand wash, but also for people to just maintain general uh, hygiene and sanitation measures that are being recommended. The availability of electricity will mean that they can actually refrigerate some of the things that they need to refrigerate, but also the water will support them in terms of uh, quality provision of health services. The organization has invested about 50 million guaya for the facilities. Lilongwe Council Chairperson Luciano Bodomani was happy that the gesture who is some of the challenges the hospital was facing. We have been facing challenges at, the, at this centre uh, since its establishment in 2008. Uh, people were not coming to this centre because we are facing the challenges of having no water. So this time around having this water, I think people will be flowing to this uh, hospital whereby sanity will be available. Chuamba Health Centre serves about 60,000 people. You're watching the news here on Zodiac. You'll be back with more after this. We all start differently, but we can all start with the strongest protection. Because some start early, others start late. Some from little homes, others from big ones. Some start together or all on their own. It doesn't matter how you start as long as you start strong with new Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection. Now with fluoride plus arginine for four times more strengthening power so that you can give them the strongest start to their day. Colgate. Start strong. Stay strong. Welcome back and here are our top stories again. Governance experts slam government on its indecisiveness on independence celebrations. Parliament refers to its legal affairs committee, the Labour Relations Amendment Bill, which seeks to grant employers right to deduct salaries for workers that are on strike. President Chagwira calls on African leaders to emulate the spirit of Zambian first president Kenneth Kaunda. And MLS describes government decision to appoint two high court judges to diplomatic missions as interference in the judiciary. Moving on, the Malawi Law Society has described Tonse's government decision to appoint two high court judges to diplomatic missions as a clear interference by the executive in the judiciary. Two high court judges, Agnes Patemba and S. Michombo, are being redeployed from the judiciary to lead various diplomatic missions. Malawi Law Society MLA's Honorary Secretary Crispin Ngunde has told Zodiac that the appointment by the government is retrogressive and will affect delivery of justice. Chimumi Badata reports. Malawi Law Society has raised the complaints amid stretched thin staff at the judiciary. Crispin Ngunde, Honorary Secretary for the Society, says the appointment is not respecting the separation of powers principle. The decision to appoint one of the judges to go uh, to take up a, a diplomatic uh, post means that uh, we are removing uh, some able hands from the judiciary, which will, at the end, affect 
the delivery of justice or the access to justice in general. Judge Agnes Patemba is yet to assume a new role as Deputy High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Minister of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Rejoice Shumba told Zodiac the recent appointed individuals who assume their new roles once government recalls those whose period has expired. These the ambassadors whose tours of duty expired will be coming back home and government is working on the logistics to bring them back. And when they are back home, uh, we we'll work on the those ambassadors that have been appointed to go and take those positions. So it is a process. It is not only the ambassadors that have been recalled. Patemba has served as a judge for close to nine months now after she was elevated by President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera in October last year. For Zodiac, this is Shimwemwe Padata. Now, the law to end discrimination against persons with disability is well in place and agreeable by all Malawians, but it appears this law is not being fully embraced. This is, this, was, this is what was evident this week when the Malawi Law Commission held a conservative law review process on the Immigration Act in Delongwe. A blind man, Chikondi Kainga, of the Malawi Union of the Blind, complained that he had been discriminated for not being provided with braille materials for the proposed law review when everyone else in the room was given a pack of documents. This report by Innocent Kumchera. A visually impaired man is among delegates to this review meeting. While delegates are busy going through paperwork on the proposed new immigration law, the man can hardly follow a thing. Organizers of this all-important event prepared no information in braille for the visually impaired delegates to the conference. Chikundi Kainga has been invited to the review meeting to represent the Malawi Union of the Blind. I was very concerned with what I just witnessed here. This is happening when we have legislations in the country against discrimination to people with disability and when organizations everywhere are advocating for inclusivity. While Malawi may have enacted legislation on disability to end discrimination against persons with disability, one of what we see happening on the ground runs parallel to the spirit of the legislation. This seemingly minor mission on a program speaks volumes to that. Traditional authority Kacheri of Deza was mad at what happened. My advice is that um, uh, when we uh, uh, plan for uh, review meetings like these ones, we should uh, actually think of every Malawian, uh, those with uh, 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 side problems, those, uh, uh, those uh, who, are, who have disabilities, in a form or that uh, include them so that they also contribute to the, uh, the, the, the discussion, because they are all Malawians. But Dr. Harrison Mankwala, Deputy Chair for the Special Law Commission on Review of the Immigration Act, says this was an oversight. It's a secretary of matter, and I think it's going to be dealt with, especially as we go into implementation of the law, so that the uh, documentation even the actual law should be available in all languages, including Braille. But of course, Law Commissioner Rosemary Kumitsonyo Kanyuka apologized. No, we apologize for that oversight, but otherwise we do have that Braille facility. It's just that I think it's because our civic education department have already gone out into different parts of, um, of, of Malawi. The National Diplomatic Institute, NDI, has complained that poor policy coordination continues to deny the country's youths from accessing opportunities amid rising unemployment. NDI's Program Officer Henry Chirobe spoke during an engagement with members of parliament on how best government can respond to challenges facing young people. We have a report. Some lawmakers during the engagement complained youths can hardly access loans at NIF and other financial lending institutions even though they are meant to be primary beneficiaries. A concern that was echoed by the National Democratic Institute, NDI. Henle Shirobwe, NDI's programs officer, attributes this to lack of proper policy coordination. They are trained to be job seekers. They are not necessarily trained to be uh, creators of employment. So that's one of the key areas that has to be looked at. Some of the initiatives that are being that are not that, that are being targeted towards the youth are not really effective because maybe they are done in piecemeal fashion. So for instance, in terms of the loans that are given to the youths, 
There are loans that cannot spur economic development. There are loans that are kind of window dressing. They are not addressing the real issues. But Parliamentary Youth Caucus Chairperson Owen Chomaniga is suggesting that government should closely engage youths to root out some challenges they are facing. We we'll see that uh, first we need to engage and really get what is real challenges our people are facing and they be part of that. I'm looking at it, for example, the NIF loan. Somebody applies for two million. If you don't give him a chance to express it properly, you might misjudge and give him 100,000. And in all this, you find that we are very distant from our own people. Because we are very distant, we are assuming a lot. I think one of the biggest problems we have is we are using assumption instead of real evidence-based decision-making. The first meeting was part of a series of engagements that NDI is conducting on how best the nation can save the plight of the youths. This is Chimwemwe Padata for Zodiac. Well, that's about what we had time for in this edition of news, but before we go, a look at the headlines. Government, governance experts slam government on its indecisiveness on independent celebrations. Parliament refunds its Legal Affairs Committee to Labor Relations Amendment Bill, which seeks to grant employers right to tax salaries for workers that are on strike. President Chabira calls on African leaders to emulate the spirit of Zambia's first president, Kenneth Kaunda. MLS describes government decision to appoint two high court judges to diplomatic missions as judiciary. Visit our website, zodiacmalavi.com, for more news. My name is Robert Kaunda. Thanks for watching.